Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete. Today I got my buddy Billy here. He's gonna give me a hand. We got my good buddy uh, Odie there, Italian fella. That's his brand new to him. Uh, v Max 700 Redhead 1998. He's not much of a snowmobiler, but he bought this and he brought it over to me because he knows I like the Yamahas and uh, we'll give it a good going over. It's got a throttle issue. It ain't idling right or and when you go to rev it up, it's kind of surge and all that, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I think most of you guys that know the Yamahas know what it is, too. Throttle uh, safety. The throttle override or TORS system, I believe, is the issue with it. But uh, we're going to get her in the shop, give her a good going over, pre-season kind of thing. Make sure it's good to go for the Italian Stallion. Let's go, baby. Oh, oh, oh what do you see in there, Jim? Oh, you like the redheads, eh? They're, they're feisty. <laughs> I'm more partial to Christina. <laughs> she's, she's got the dark hair. <laughs> but yeah, that is the sweet old redhead. Everybody knows that these are the nice ones, the good ones to have. They're pretty reliable, dependable, strong. Uh, the only thing is, and it goes kind of with... It's not just the Yamahas, though. The throttle override, even the old, uh, my old T-Cat was bad for it, the Articats, all that. You'd go to hit the throttle and she'd bog right out or do nothing, right? It's supposed to sense slack in the throttle cable there. And it's got a little switch that goes in and plugs in. So the idea is, you know, if you let off on this and it doesn't notice the slack or whatever, it's supposed to cut the throttle so you don't <laughs> railroad into a tree or something like that. Thinks the throttle's stuck, right? So... That seems to be the common issue, but, you know, we always just disconnect it, bypass it, because all it does, it never actually works. It just always buggers up, and you can't get it to rev up. So, uh, let's uh, spark her up and see if it does it. She might need a little choke there. Oh, <laughs> Sounds like a Yamaha one cylinder there, old Bravo 250. Yeah, this thing's sick. We need, we need some plugs there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, he did drop some off too, so maybe we'll grab them out of the. Uh, yeah. They're off the t uh, on the table in the shop there. Throw a couple of bogies in there and. Uh, Try her again. Try yeah, again. maybe the tours is fine. Maybe it's just, you know, down a lung or two here. So uh, we'll throw some fresh bogeys in it and uh, try again. Oh, you got some fresh ones there. He dropped these off with it. And that right there for a good time. BR9, baby. Oh, nice one. Nah, not terrible. That one's that, soaking wet. Yeah, that's... She not firing. All right, we've got him out of the package. Uh, we're just going to eyeball the gap right now. We just want to get her inside. She's freaking cold out here. <laughs> when we get her inside, too, we'll have to do a compression test on her just to make sure. Should be perfect. Oh, the redhead's never dead. <laughs> <laughs> that much right there. Yeah, that's the perfect torque right there. <laughs> Ooh, it looks like we got little signs of uh, Mickey Mouse down in here. Yeah. Uh, now let's see how she all right. sounds. Take two. Oh! That's going already. You're not even touching the throttle, are you? So you hear that bouncing away. That's the throttle override. It's cutting it in and out. So to fix that, what we're going to do... Never leave home without your handy dandy Swiss Army rocket oil. The idle was pretty high. I've got that screwed out about two and a half already. And it's still a bit on high. Oh,
that's fixed. Let's uh, come on, Odie, come pick her up. Five hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We got to get her in. We'll warm up. Go through this thing, and uh, we already know we're winning. It's already running better than when he dropped it off. So uh, the trick is there. If your throttle is acting up, these two wires here that come off this sensor on the bottom of the idle screw, they go to the these two connectors here. You just unplug them and then connect this side together onto itself. That's the CDI box side or whatever. That overrides it and you are good to go full throttle. You bring her in the shop. Oh, you keep the dangle down now, eh? Nothing better than the sound of a Yamaha triple. <laughs> they do. Oh, what a smoking in here. <laughs> it's like Christina's here smoking. <laughs> All right, I'll let her warm up a little bit. My thumb's frozen already. Like it's not even minus 10 outside yet and I'm just not built for the cold. Warm up and then we'll get at her. Yeah, okay, so we gotta go over this whole thing. We're gonna be pulling the carbs, give them a good cleaning. We will do a compression test on it just to verify what it is. But like Billy said, I don't think there's gonna be anything wrong with the compression on her. She sounded good. We'll give it a once over. We'll check the drive bearing, all that stuff. And uh, as you can see, she ain't got no snow flap, uh, typical. <laughs> he dropped it off with it. Uh, these things here, you back up and uh, that thing gets caught under there, it rips it right off. So we gotta come up with a mount, uh, fix that, put it back on there. We'll check the condition of the fuel. I don't know how long it's been sitting. Uh, and I think there is signs of some ice in there. So we better check that air box just to make sure no critters got down in there. But uh, yeah, so far she's already running way better than it was. And uh, she's gonna be mint when we're done. We're gonna gear up and do a compression test on her. How many K you say this thing's got on her? Just shy of 11,000 kilometers. 11,000 said no Polaris owner. <laughs> <laughs> 10,768. And this thing's a 1998. That's provided the speedo cable's good and working too, right? Yeah, sure. So yeah, kill switch off. Uh, wide open throttle and five tugs. You still do wide open throttle with carburation? I do. I mean, I just do it so it lifts the slides up and everything so you're getting no restriction in the airflow going through. I mean, some guys say it don't matter. It probably doesn't, but hey, every little bit. Five tugs we got. Oh, that's about 130. Not bad. That's good. That's better than Remington's... Uh, <laughs> Brand new, well, 2020 XCR was 120. You know, this has got more compression than that. And <laughs> we freshened up the old ZR700 there. We're going to uh, send that off, give that uh, deal to a buddy of mine there. And then uh, that's got 140 PSI each side. So <laughs> that's a beast compared to the XCR. Ooh. Hole number two. Five tugs. Oh, looking good. So far, Andy, you're winning. But yeah, doing the compression test first before you do anything else is kind of a vital thing because if you find out right away that one cylinder's down, then you know what? We ain't working on a sled, we're drinking beer. So uh, <laughs> no point wasting time, right? Last one. Three, four, five. Oh, you gave her some extra sauce on there, eh? Look at that. Yamaha Redhead does not let you down. And that's got almost 11,000 on her, eh? She's mint. These redheads, are, they're pretty much bulletproof. Right? They pretty much clean the carburetors once a year and they'll last forever. See, that's why Yamaha's getting out of the snowmobile game. They don't sell enough snowmobiles because they last forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll keep them out. We'll, now that we know every compression's good, we got the throttle figured out, we'll set them to the proper gap, which should be actually right here on. What do we got here? 
Uh, 28 to 31 thou. Okay, no problem. While we're here. Yeah, she's been sitting a little bit. She's got some oxidization on the clutches. We'll give them a little cleanup. We'll check them, check these rollers and all that. Pull the belt off, have a good look. I don't know if I have an Ultimax in stock. I might have to make a phone call because I'm sure Odie's gonna want to take her to the max with an Ultimax, <laughs> eh, Jim? <laughs> these ones are like the easiest to get off. Slide her off of there. Oh, I say easiest, now it's wedged in there. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. There we go. No tools required. Nice one. Yeah, it's not bad. I'd say this belt is uh, not the too old. Yeah, we can just pull the secondary off. We'll. Uh, we could just pop the uh, speedo cover off of there, have a look at the uh, drive bearing. Maybe we'll slack the axle off, lift it up a little bit. It's a good idea on these things, even if the bearing's good, slide it off of there, grease it, and put it back on, you know, that way it doesn't seize on the drive shaft, because when you get one of these bearings seized to the drive shaft, it's a nightmare. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Remington's? <laughs> Red, Redford. My buddy Redford had an 06 Apex. He was in a pickle, uh, trying to do his own preseason, service his drive bearing. Could not get it off, it was seized on there. Ended up having to drag it over here. I had to grind the freaking thing off to get it, you know, and it's, you don't get much access in a tight spot like that. So, turns a five minute job into a <laughs> all day swear fest, and uh, you know, you empty the beer fridge pretty quick on jobs like that. So, yeah, uh, no doubt. Yeah, it's a good thing to do when you're preseason in, so we'll, we'll check that for Andy too. Boot. Oh, that screw strip there. Yeah, and you, you know what that caused from? What's that caused from? Mice piss. What? Yeah. Mouse pee yeah. strip screws? Yep. Yeah. See how rusty it is? Yeah. It's pretty nice. It is pretty rusty. The other ones. Here, smell my hands. Tell me what smell <laughs> I fell for that back in grade school. I ain't doing that again. So trying to get the air box out of here. Uh, well, I think I'll. I think I got a way of getting that out of there, but. Uh, just not cracking loose there, buddy. We might have to drill that one out. I'm sure we've got more of these clamps somewhere. I'm not gonna be able to reuse this one anyway. All right, well, so far, mouse piss is winning because we're not getting that <laughs> undone. So let's try and uh, let's pop this air box out of here and we'll see if we can pop the carburetor off of there. And then uh, we'll just pull that clamp off and replace it. Oh yeah, some goodness in there. A little bit of signs. Uh, I wonder if there's any. Okay, well, that's not as bad as I was thinking. Come out now. Boom. Got everything basically unhooked here, right? So you got a flathead screwdriver here? We'll try and get in between the body of the carburetor and the boot here and try and wedge it off of there. Is she coming? Kind of tip it and lean it a little bit. Nice one. Boom! I mean, we could have just drilled the head of that off of there too, but we didn't. <laughs> and the choke cable is seized. In the... No! Ah, yeah. oh, those choke cables can be a bugger. Oh, we just gotta unhook. We got a coolant line that goes in here. It's a heater. Uh, runs coolant from the head. Goes across the carburetors. Warm them up in the cold, cold days. Usually just shut them off though. <laughs> Matt, there's the... The barb for the choke is seized in there, so we'll get a little screwdriver in there and we'll give her a little tweak and just see if we can persuade it to free up. Okay, so just gonna give that a bit of a tweak, top and bottom. You can already see the dust falling out of there. There we go. She's moving now, Jim. Just don't wanna use any sharp tools on the cable cause any frays or anything, right? Almost there. Now we need a pair of pliers to pull her out of there. Come on. 
just like so. Or tickety boo. <laughs> All right, time to cut those carbs out of your diet, buddy. One more. Oh, another cooling hole another there. Cooling holes. There you go. About time. <laughs> nice one. Now with the carbs out of there, we can have a look under here, make sure there's no surprises with the mice or anything down in here. We can check all the carb boots, make sure there's no rips or tears or anything. A little bit of antifreeze in there just from pulling them off, but that's no biggie. And then uh, you get those carbs over on the bench to clean. I'll pull the uh, speedo drive, the cover there, check the cable, check the bearing. Okay, so on this side we have the little speedo drive housing on the end of the drive bearing. Pull the little rubber sleeve off and then just undo this little spin nut there. Ooh, she's in there tight. <laughs> These fellas are 12 mil, you gotta go grab a socket. Or you got a 12 mil here, Jim. Oh, we got one here. So we got those fellas out. Not too bad, a little rusty looking. This thing's stuck in there. Speedo cable's freaking stuck in here. Oh. But the cable's in one piece. Started it was twisting a little bit, but still working. Half pulled it right out of the speedo there. Just stuff her back in. I can hear it's spinning all the way up in the cable, so we're good. This little fella here. That's a little insert there that couples, goes into this end, slides into the end of the drive shaft down in there. It's stuck in here too, so I'm sure it has twisted a little bit as well. Oh yeah, I can't get it. We're gonna leave that alone, carry on with our life. We're not gonna bugger around with that. But there's the drive bearing there. Looks fairly clean on the end of the shaft, so I'm hoping we should lift up the back. I'll back off the, uh, rear axle and we'll see if we can pop that out make sure it does slide free on there and then uh, grease it put it back on or if it's a little bit growly put a new one on there and i got the v-max uh hanging from the cherry picker there uh track tension everything looks good on this too so i think somebody was looking after this fella but uh, before i go and back that all off let's go check in on billy here because there's something i want to make sure <laughs> we check so he's got him in his little little bucket here so he can keep track of everything because uh, in the past we've had an issue with uh, losing something. <laughs> the little rubber O-rings and washers. <laughs> For the, the, the mixture screws. I've done it twice. The second time I did it, Pete said, that's twice. The third time, you're out. Three strikes, you're out, Jim. So, <laughs> if Pete all of a sudden wonders where I went, <laughs> He knows what happened. <laughs> lost another one. So far, so good. It's clean fuel in there anyway. We're not seeing any signs of, uh, you know, the sludge, varnish, stuff like that. But uh, good idea there, uh, having the tote there. You're not losing any of the screws or any of the bets. Well, I had this last week doing the carburetors and I still lost one. <laughs> <laughs> Which screws are we talking about here, Jim? For anybody that doesn't know, if they don't think about it, when you pull these carburetors off, if you're pulling all the jets out and you're, you want to go through and give it a thorough cleaning, you got your mixture screws down in here on the V-Max, this V-Max anyway, this is where they are. So you got these tiny little flatheads. They thread in there and then there's a spring and then there's a little washer and a rubber O-ring that they seat down on. Now, if you take all these out, and you get the needles out and you think that's all that's in there? No, sir, just ask Billy. And they are hard to get out sometimes. <laughs> so if you take those out and you think it's just... It's not just that. It's not just the needle, oh, the needle and the spring. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little rubber O-ring and a washer down in there that that little needle seats against. 
So if you just take that out and then you turn these suckers upside down and you're spraying stuff in there. Look at that, popped out nice and easy. Yeah, so you got that little rubber O-ring and that little washer. Yeah. They have to go back in there. They are, they're kind of critical, eh? And if you drop that on this floor. <laughs> she gone. You're not finding it. <laughs> That's why one of those totes is a handy thing to have. If they fall out in there, at least you'll find them. But if they fall out down here, like that is, <laughs> that's a tiny O-ring, tiny washer. Yeah, she gone. And a half, two. That's right. So before you pull them out, you always want to screw them in first. Count how many turns you get. And then that way, when you put it all back together, at least you have a reference to put them to. Because you know the machine was running before you took it apart we're just doing you know maintenance on it making sure all the jets are clean or you know if you got an issue and it is running rough or you know it's not working right you screw them in and you find that it's out then boom you found your problem right so always screw them in first before you take them out and have you been keeping track are they all set the same one and a half two two perfect so they're all two turns out We'll set her back to that and then the rest of this is basically straightforward you're just going to pull the pilots and the main jets make sure they're clear no crap or gunk in there they're not plugged up if they are blocked up just clean them out with a little piece of wire or something like that nothing to scratch or gouge the jets and put her back in and we should be good but yeah we put those new spark plugs in she was running like a top so i think just with a simple uh clean for maintenance we should be golden I'll go uh, get that drive bearing off. I need a 17 and a 19 mil, crack the nut loose on the back axle, and then a 14 mil, and through the window here, you can get at the adjusters. I'll back them off. Hopefully nothing seized in there. Okay, we got a crusty old cotter pin on here. I'm gonna pull it out just so I can get a socket on here instead of a wrench. 19 mil. Don't be surprised if the cotter pin breaks off in there. It's a steel pin and an aluminum shaft, but at least that way now, we can get a nut on there. We can just crack her loose. Nice one. Don't have to take it all the way off, just crack it loose. Okay, that axle now is free and clear. Roll the track so we can see these adjusters. Like I said, these are 14 mil. them off one side at a time. Just like so. Only reason we're doing that is so we're relieving the tension so it's not pulling on that front drive shaft as far so we can undo the set screws on the bearing and slip it off. Okay, so we're under here. That's the collar. For the bearing, we got a couple of set screws, so we're gonna undo these fellas. I think they're one eighth uh, Allen keys, I think, if I'm not mistaken. We'll crack them loose, and that should uncouple it from there, and then we'll get in there with a pry bar or long screwdriver and pop her off. Okay, so I lied. Uh, I think one eighth fits in the back one, or three mil fits in the back one, and the front ones are 764 or something like that, so. I don't know why they're different sizes, but they are. Get in there. Back that sucker off. Pull it around. Get in there. Back that sucker off. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but I got those loose. Then you can spin this collar here. Spin that off. And then look at that. A little bit of pry action in there. Oh, my light just shut off. And then you can see that bearing's already sliding off. Nice one. Okay, I got a new light. Let's keep prying this guy out of there. Just like so. And then you can pop the bearing. Right off, there you go. Now that's a thing of beauty. Oh, listen to that. I think she's due. This is why we check these things. 
She's a little dry. Oh, yeah. Just so happens I have a new bearing in stock. This one is nice and smooth and brand new. So, pop a little bit of grease. Put her on the shaft here. Lube the shaft, hey eh, Billy? <laughs> I heard you giggling. <laughs> what are you, 12? <laughs> I'll grab our new bearing. Back these uh, set screws out all the way so they're not sticking through so it doesn't hang you up when you go to slide this fella back on there. Doing things one-handed here. Need a rag. Need two hands for this. Gotta lift it up. Push her in. Just like so. Then we we'll just put the plate back on, sandwich it in. Then I'll uh, rotate that collar on the back side, lock it. All it is is that back collar is what, like an eccentric. So you spin the bearing once it locks, then you pinch your set screws. Holds it tight to the shaft so the inner race isn't spinning on the drive shaft. And uh, we're golden. All right, with that plate and cover back on there, that's holding the bearing where it should be. So now I can lock her in from underneath. Oh, hey, same thing now that we're, we got that on there. Use a screwdriver, put a little bit of pressure on that guy. There we go. Got that spin. Lock it in. And just tighten down these set screws. Oh, get out of there. Get this fella. Boom. Now oh, I just gotta slide the cable back in there. Tighten up this nut. Boom. Shaka laka. All right, while I'm under here and the track's all loose, we can check all these wheels and make sure the bearings in those fellas are nice and smooth. Looks like his sliders aren't too bad. They're getting a little low in spots, but he's just using this or just wants to use it up at his hunting camp. He's not gonna be riding her too far, so I don't think we need to change the sliders on her. And all these wheels are looking pretty good. We will have to hit all the grease points though, make sure everything's lubed up. And then these wheels here, we can give them a bit of a spin with the track loose too. They're not slopping around or nothing. Let's tighten her back up. Oh, speak too soon. Look at this. We got a stud just dangling out of here. That's no good. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to roll this whole track around and check. Obviously, yep, the backer is busted and flew off. So it probably has, yeah, that style. The crappy aluminum backers, they always crack. And then you lose a chunk out of it. And then the rest of the washer goes. Your stud comes loose and... Uh, Goes rifling right through your heat exchanger. <laughs> a good way to end the day. You've got the carburetors all clean and ready to go. Didn't find anything out of the ordinary? No, nope, a little bit of dirt, but wasn't weren't too bad at all. Pretty straightforward. I mean, we've shown uh, carb cleaning before in some past videos. Uh, I didn't think there was too much of a point showing the whole end up. These ones were actually pretty clean. And next time we get some real dirty ones, we'll... We'll do her another video, but uh, for now, just slap her back together. Looks like I got to cut a bunch of studs out of here. Oh yeah, like this is gonna be, this is gonna be forever. Here's another one, loose. Another one with a busted backer. Another one. We gotta pull all these out, this is no good. Hopefully they undo. Ooh, got lucky with that one. Now usually these studs, have an Allen key head in there. These ones are Torx, so that just makes it even more lovely because these things, usually when you're cranking them with an impact gun, it always usually snap. So we'll see how long this one lasts. 
Well, I mean, I've been doing pretty good so far. I've got like <laughs> over eight of them out, but sometimes some stubborn ones, I can't get the torque spit to hold on there, so you gotta cut them off. Peeling them all out, and then here we go. Look at that. That's what you call a back scratcher or a hangnail right there. That one is dangling out of the track. The only way to deal with them is to cut them right out. So long, sucker. Now, that is not a glorious job by any means, but I mean, we pulled out about two dozen uh, bad backer studs. They were loose, you know, they were all eventually gonna get chucked out of here and i mean you can't let that go you know you see all those broken backers these ones here are like the worst backers ever made for snowmobiles so if you're out there looking to buy a snowmobile and they got these this style of backer on there make sure you have a good look at all of them get lifted up rotate that track check them all out because guaranteed there's going to be busted ones on there and that's going to ruin your day that thing there goes through the heat exchanger kaboom motor overheat time Okie dokie artichoke, now we tighten back up the track. Get it close, go side to side. Trying to gauge it on the back of these nuts. If they're even or not. And then we give her a spin. I'm not. Hurting anything you got going on up there, eh, Jim? No, sir. Oh, we're not too, too bad there. We'll wait. I'll leave this back axle loose. Get those carburetors all hooked back up. When we're ready to spark this up, we'll run her a little bit. Double check the track on this thing. Lock that back axle, and that part of the job is done like dinner. Well, you setting the gap on those new bogies? Put them to... Zero through 30. Oh, same gap as the, between the teeth of your first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we should check the chain case too. So I think what we should do is we could just pull the muffler so we can get at the, the tensioner bolt and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then I think there's a drain bolt on these ones. So maybe we'll drain her out, adjust the chain, fill her up with some fresh stuff. Oh. Yamaha chain cases. They're good. <laughs> Not like... Not like Remington's Terby over there. Yeah. This one, not the good. Nice. Oh, that's where they've been living, eh? Well, I guess we're gonna need the shop back and uh, give those suckers an eviction notice. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go under here, put this 12 mil. Ah, oh, there's a bolt. Is a drain. Feels like there's a washer on it. Look at that, Jim. It is, eh? Little uh, 12 mil bolt goes in on the back side of the chain case up in there. Drain her out. We'll have to let it down a little bit just to get all of it out, but uh, take it a boo. I guess the job you're doing uh, really sucks, eh? <laughs> it's getting oily. Hey? She's getting oily with the gear oil down here. Oh. I want to suck that up here. All right, well, we can let that down a little bit, let her drain. Yeah, she's still draining. It actually doesn't look too bad. Oh, let that drain, maybe have a beer break. <laughs> <laughs> a little crusty looking down in here, but we just got to crack. Oh, that jam nut loose. Spin her back a few threads. Oh, it was already, already meant. It was nice and tight there. Mm -hmm. Just bag her off. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Log her back down, Jim. Nice so maybe whoever had this before Odie actually kind of looked after it. Yamaha owners are usually pretty respectable people. Boom, drain bolts in, new oil's going in. This is, uh, this job's going better than I thought there, buddy. 
We're almost done. Yeah, Ma, what do you expect? <laughs> they were thinking about the owners, like, let's give them more time to drink beer. <laughs> they don't have to spend all day working on their sled. What do we got here, Jim? Oh, come on. Oh. Reverse is there. Perfect. Beauty. Standard is up in here. But we have reverse. Oh. We got rebackage, so Perfect. nice, clean, and at the correct level. Okay, so throttle override fixed. Check. Carburetors clean. Check. Brand new bogeys gapped. Check. Uh, drive bearing. Check. All the crappy studs out of there. Check. Um, so all we really got to do, we already, oh yeah, chain case. Check. That's all good. So I say we uh, uh, try and fire it just to make sure, you know, get some fuel in the carbs, get them running. And then uh, we'll give that a little quick clean on the clutch. And then we can put the secondary back on, spin the track. Check the final adjustment, go from there. <laughs> nice one. Choke works. What RPM are we running at here? Oh, here we're upside down. <laughs> She's a little on the low side. A little more. Oh, you're sounding better. Right around there. Nice one. Low smoke, too. All right. Runner, runner. So well, now that it's a runner, runner, uh, we got all that uh, corrosion on the primary clutch there. We got to clean that off now. We did it in a video past. D-Ron uh, just stuck his hand in there while it was running. And, uh, you know, we don't want to end up like every high school woodshop teacher and uh, be missing a <laughs> digit or two. So I uh, just stapled the scotch brake to the pry bar there so we can just... <whistles> and we don't lose any of these fingers. Christina likes these fingers. She likes what they do. So uh, fire up, Jim. <laughs> now, you don't have to go revving it up. I know everybody says, don't start your stone wheel without a belt on it. Like, it'll be fine. <laughs> It's like cheers. <laughs> Long time no see, buddy. Yeah. Nice to see everybody. Yeah, it's good to see you. Especially the news is you're uh, bringing me some beer. <laughs> you're welcome anytime, buddy. Have to go shopping. <laughs> Remember, my size is mostly Canadian, by the way. <laughs> so we're gonna put the secondary back on. A little bit of <laughs> just a touch of grease up on here. Same thing with this. Little spacer. You don't need a lot. Dabble, do you? There was no spacers or anything on here when you took her off. Eh? Yeah. Come on. What? It's not holding my tongue right? <laughs> what is going on? There we go. This thing's got a bunch of spacers that have to go over top of that little aluminum see how they can sit down and drop and get pinched in there you don't want to do that make sure they're up on top and then take her in flip the brake on where's our 14 mil oh, she ain't got to be crazy tight although it was when you took it off wasn't it very tight you had to beat it off didn't you <laughs> used to that <laughs> Free wheeling. Nice one. Nice one. I guess we throw the belt on there and then uh, adjust the track, right? Good thing about the uh, Yamaha, it's got the arrow for the direction. Can't mess it up unless you're not paying attention or you're dyslexic. Same thing. Wedge it in there. Push it in, let it drop down. And just roll it around. 
Beautiful. And that's actually, that's pretty good. Bang on. Almost forgot the uh, snow flap needs to go back on. So we're just gonna cut those original rivets off. That's a little screw okay. or something. <laughs> screw you. Okay, so it didn't rip through these two center ones. So we'll just pop. I got some uh, fat headed uh, <laughs> rivets here. Oh yeah. Perfect. One of them in there. And then I'll uh, rig up. Got my handy dandy air riveter. It's the only way to rivet. Okay, multitasking here. You ready, Jim? Yep. And then we'll just re-drill on the outside corners. You gotta be super careful though. The heat exchanger is right there. So you gotta stay low into the corner. Should be in the clear. Let me see any freeze running out. <laughs> Nice one. Nice one. Trade. <laughs> Alright, just gonna keep my finger there to make sure. <laughs> There's that guy. Hold on a second. Put that on the back cup, otherwise it's gonna shoot that thing right out in your face. <laughs> Boom. Nice one. Oh, there you go. Oh. Blind man, love to see it. Okay, all the tools are put away. We got the snow flap on. Everything is greased, the skid, front spindles, all that. So let's uh, fire this bad boy back up and uh, run the track. Brakes off. <laughs> Yeah, just tighten up that rear axle, and we are, I think we're done, like, beer o'clock. Oh, we just gotta put a cotter pin back through there. I pulled that cotter pin out. Yeah, the old one here. Oh, it's got one more trip in it, eh? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Get in there. Side we need some side cutters. guy through here give her a little bendy bend take it a bit and that right there is a wrap <laughs> come pick up your snowmobile andy we're gonna be drinking beer <laughs> that's right billy you know what time it is oh uh, thank you all right just like that andy's new to him v max 700 is good to go you know all in all it wasn't that bad just needed a little bit of a you know regular maintenance just like any good yamaha does right jim <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed this video you know a little bit of a step-by-step -step how to uh pre-season what some things to look out for you know those studs are a killer you know if you're buying an old sled and it's got those uh backers on there make sure you check it out because they will end your day bad so uh Keep it in mind. But uh, as always, you know, we appreciate all the support. You guys tuning in, subscribing. We, you know, we're doing pretty good. We're getting up there almost 22,000 now. So it's all because of you guys. You know, we really appreciate it. Appreciate you checking out the website, www.rednecks-dirtyhands.com. Get some merch supporting the channel. And as always, take her easy. Cheers. <laughs> just noticing <laughs> the sticker's just gonna send it. Larry Enticer. He's a local fella too, eh? Yeah, he is. Yeah, pretty sure he used to work at uh, Blackstock Motorsports there. Yep. And then, uh, <laughs> I think we all know what that means. <laughs> Whoever owned this VMAX before Odie, I think they like to party. <laughs>